Good morning and welcome to The Art of Composition. Thanks for joining me today. I appreciate it. So today I'm going to look at another Susan Brooker painting. I'm a huge fan. I've been studying her work for at least six months now. I have all her books. Check them out. They're on my homepage. I highly recommend them. If you have any questions about them, you can drop me an email. But today I want to drop the harmonic armature down on one of her paintings. I believe this is a new painting. I haven't seen this before. And one thing when it comes to learning composition, you have to understand that there's a relationship between the outer frame and the divisions and the angles of your subject within that frame. There's a relationship. There's a subgeometry. So what the armature does, it gives the artist a, a blueprint for where they can place their subject on the canvas, depending on the size of the canvas, square, rectangle, etc., so that it makes visual sense and there's a relationship between, like I said, the outer frame and where you're placing your subject, where you're creating certain divisions, so that you have visual harmony. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to draw out the harmonic armature today. And for those that are new to my website, the harmonic armature is a one grid approach. It's, I think, the easiest system to learn when you're first starting out learning the art of composition. And then you can move into dynamic symmetry. They're both wonderful tools. But I believe after years of study, there's an easier approach to learning this. So let me get started in dropping that armature down. If you haven't visited my website in a while, I've made some significant updates to my user's guide. So download a, a new copy. When you get a chance, just go to the menu bar and click on free downloads and the art of composition. Everything on my website is free. My website is a research hub. And I started learning design 12 years ago. As mentioned in several of my other videos, I started back in 2008. And I had a fascination for composition because I wanted to improve my photographs. So I started with the Barnstone DVDs. I just completed a video review of those DVDs. You can find that on my website as well. But I started there and I moved into other areas, Juliet Aristides books and a lot of art books. And... Basically, right now, I teach the harmonic armature. When I drop this diagonal line down here, notice how it picks up this side of the profile of the face. And when you're studying or analyzing work, you'll notice certain themes that artists tend to use, especially with modern artists. And in my own research, I think analyzing work using the harmonic, harmonic armature is the easiest approach. For example, when I drop this diagonal line down here, notice how it's picking up the angle in this jacket right here and then when I bring it up here it's enclosing this area here so you have this enclosure going on right there and the harmonic armature is always the same 14 lines which means it's a repetitive process and even though if you're just starting out this might look a little confusing after doing after drawing it a few times it becomes second nature you don't even think about it when I drop this diagonal line down here notice how it's picking up this area there in the hairline and many times, or I should say sometimes, depending on the artist you're studying, the, division, the uh, divisions of the armature aren't always apparent. When I drop this diagonal line here, notice how it's picking up the area of the chin. So you have this area here, and then it comes down at that point. And let me just finish this off here. Drop these last two diagonal lines at this point. And then you have your... 14 line armature. There are several ways the artist can use the armature. They can frame in their subject. They can use the diagonal lines to follow certain past movements in their design. And they can drop horizontal and vertical divisions wherever two or more lines intersect. Or they can do all three at once. So I'm just going to point out a few divisions that help frame in the subject. If I drop a vertical right here for example, it's framing in the left side right at the hairline at that point. I'll just bring that all the way up. I can drop a vertical here where this section of the hair meets that point. But when I bring it to that point, it's crossing this diagonal line right here. Well, I can drop a horizontal line at that point. It locks the chin in. So just from those few lines, I've locked in this area 
right here in the outer edge at that point. You also have a division here, right, at that point, because you have this vertical going there, and that can be derived at this point. If I drop a horizontal line, I believe right here, where these diagonal lines intersect, where it intersects this diagonal line, I can drop a vertical and that frames in this area here. And then where that where this vertical meets that diagonal, I can lock in at that point where this vertical meets this diagonal line here and it frames in the head. So I've completely framed in my subject with a few lines. But you also have other divisions here in the center you have right underneath the nose. So that locks that area in there. And then what I can do, just to simplify this a little bit, I will change the color to yellow and thicken this up just a little bit. And then I can demonstrate where you can frame in your subject, right? You have these certain divisions going on. You have this diagonal line being played out, like I said. You have this one coming into play at that point. You have this vertical framing in. This vertical here creates a division. You have this horizontal, locks in the chin. You have this vertical here. Bring that to that point. So you can see some of these divisions coming into play. It's not overly complex. You have a vertical in the hair at this point. You have this diagonal line at this point here with the, with the uh, jacket collar at that point, right? And you have a division right down the center at the eye at that point as well. So with the armature, you can create a few divisions, frame in. And then I can always eliminate these lines just to give a better idea of how you can use the armature. You remove the armature, right? And you've created and framed in certain areas. And this is some of them. It's not all of them, but it's, it's enough for the artist to determine at what point or what position on the canvas is suitable for the subject that you're you're composing, right? And this can vary, of course, with your subject matter. The armature is incredibly flexible. You know, when, when artists learn about the armature, they think it's it makes artwork too rigid. That's nonsense. I cover that in my 15 myths about composition video. But you don't have to go crazy with this either. If you're just starting out, select a few lines. Select a dominant vertical, horizontal, and diagonal line. Start with three lines. Juliet, Iracides... Juliet Aristides mentions this in Classical Painting Atelier. Start out small. And because the armature is derived from the rule of thirds, you can start with the rule of thirds and build on that slowly. But if you look at this, there's not a lot of crazy lines going on here. I'm not breaking it down to the point that it looks like you're looking at it through a screen door, just a few divisions, a few angles being played out, locking in certain areas, and so on. I hope this makes sense. Thanks for joining me today. I appreciate it. As always.